Hey, welcome to Thursday for Knowledge and welcome to the Magnificent Man Project. Today's conversation was with Eric Bordeaux and we talked in detail about online addiction, about the need for setting up a better balance in our lives with time spent online and time spent in the real world. And we talked in detail about his fantastic 30 day challenge called DigiPause, which is specifically around resetting and rewiring our emotional need and our emotional reliance on online communication and activities, which with everything that's going on in the world right now is really really important check it out have a look and don't forget if you like what you see please subscribe click the bell so you can get all the notifications take care bye Look at it, every day more losers than users. Keyboards and screens turning into nothing but portals to websites for what management wants everybody addicted to. Shopping, games, jerking off and streaming endless garbage. Thomas Pynchon. Welcome to the Magnificent Man Project group and welcome to these little uh, talks we're doing with other Magnificent Men from the group and talking about the positive impact they're trying to have on the world and looking at ways that that can support us and that we can support them. Uh, so today we're here with Eric um, and we're going to be talking about um, kind of on our online lives, really. We're going to be looking at online addiction as one of the things, but also it's a necessary thing now being online. So we're going to be looking at a lot of kind of balance and how we get that right. Um, so I'm going to hand over to you, Eric, for an introduction. If you could tell us a little bit about who you are, first and foremost. Yes, uh, thank you, Lawrence, and thank you to, for the one who's going to join us. Um, online addiction can perhaps describe a good portion of my life. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Canada, 47 years old. Um, I was initiated with MKP in 2012. So I had a chance to sit with men since then and really go deep and do a work where uh, we were meant to, uh, yeah, bring something better to this world. And that's my intention during this conversation today uh, is to bring some transparency, transparency into this conversation. About me, well, um, let's just say that right now I am uh, in a position where I'm trying to make a difference in the world knowing that this notion of being online is a new reality that we need to accept, that I need to accept, that we all need to accept. So how can we integrate this notion of life tech balance? Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to, to do right now. So uh, in terms of uh, job description, I see myself as an experienced designer. I help people create the best wellness by design that match with their reality and needs. And I'm also working as an integrative wellness coach um, to assist people in the making of this uh, beautiful wellness by design. Um, if I look at uh, my last few years, it's been years of recovery for me from an, an addiction who almost caused my, my own death. In many ways, when I say death, I mean, not just physical, right? Emotional death, spiritual death, everything. And I'll go into the details of that after. Um, but over the last few years, I had a chance to meet countless of people and I had a chance to travel in many, many, many countries, always for the same intention. And my, my intention was to get closer from solutions, closer from ways to live a life that is more harmonious. And um, I'm glad, I'm very glad that I chose to do that because right now with this lockdown, it served a purpose to me in my own life. It allowed me to stay balanced in a moment where I feel like I cannot take it anymore. I've been online my whole day, you know. Uh, I hope people will understand during this conversation that I'm not any better and not any different. But the choice that I made was to really focus on the solutions instead of the problem. And I realized there were a lack of concern from medical authorities. So I had to go and find those answers. So that's, that really described where I am now at 47. And what happened with my life over the last 12 years or so? Great. And, uh, yeah. Great. So um, just to remind to anyone in the group, we're going to have a discussion. 
And then um, after that, there will be time for any questions that you have. So if you have a question, please pop it in the comment. That's why you'll see me looking here every now and again. I do have a feed. So if you if you get that, put anything in the comments, um, we will deal with those questions at the end. Um, so going back to that thing, if this is where you are now and wanting to focus on the solution rather than the problem, um, let's look at the problem a little bit. So first, firstly, the problem as, as you saw it for yourself and the problem of where we are generally as, as human beings. Yeah, well, let's, say, let's put it this way. I was addicted to screens for 20 years. What started with the TV? Back in the days, we used to call it the idiot box. For those of you that are from my generation, Generation X, slowly became another addiction with smaller device, you know, more devices. Before, I used to be like any kids. I would go out after school and spend my, my, my days outside. There were no need to stay inside. There were no need to be screwed on the screen. But slowly but surely, as I was getting older, I got addicted to it. There was something that they couldn't find outside and especially addicted to anything that was exciting my, 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 my mind, my brain, my, you know, any, any fantasy that was not allowed in the real world were available in this box. So of course, when you add the, the first beta, then the VHS, then the DVD, what became my addiction of choice was porn. But it reached a different level when this addiction became available on a computer. And that's where this <laughs> journey of, of, of this tech breakdown, you know, almost caused my, my own death. Because with a computer, I was able to access to some content at any given time in any locations. When I was sharing the space with my parents or friends, of course, I was just watching what was available and things that were you know, pretty common, right? But <clears throat> with porn addiction, it was very different. And as we were entering into a, a faster connection, a better screen, you know, all the uh, commodity that we need to nourish this addiction, it went worse. Now uh, I was on the multitask mode all the time, which was, as you can imagine, affecting the quality of my presence, affecting the quality of my sleep, my inability to look after myself, I have a proper hygiene, inability to show up on time for work, inability to meet my friends in person. So what was first just like a little, uh, I don't know, an addiction that was consuming a part of my day became something that kept me seated in front of a computer all day long. And it's only until 2008 that I realized the impact of this addiction in my life. You know, uh, I was always giving an impression, Lawrence. I was always giving this impression of a guy who got it for himself. You know, uh, just to give you an idea, I was uh, I joined the force at 18 years old. I was a police officer for five years straight, giving an impression. You know, living behind a uniform. Um, and then later on, I changed career, traveled around with circuses. I began my work in the show business and always the same, looking good. It was all about the, the appearance. But inside, I was suffering really, really, really hard because every time that I was feeling depressed, stressed, confused, I had access to this little candy. And I need also to mention that I had issues with alcohol, you know, not just non-chemical substance, substance abuse, but also things like alcohol that I was able to deal with. I joined, uh, I went to a rehab center. I've joined AA. I've done 12 years of program. But never did I find anyone talking about online addiction. And every time that I was doing that, they would send me back to the idea that as long as you don't drink today, you're fine. So until 2008, I was looking like crazy. I was looking to find a solution to it. I went to see doctors, therapists, psychologists. And the only thing that I found was, well, it's not really a problem. The only thing you have to do is to control yourself, you know? And the only thing you have to do is to uh, 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 look at solutions that are available online. That's in 2008. So I found a bunch of therapists that said, what can help you minus a 
10, 10 weeks program online. And I'm like, dude, that makes no sense. If I'm hooked to the screen and you want me to go back on it, what's available here? There's no solutions. And uh, long story short, uh, it is in the middle of this uh, breakdown that I found my option, my solution, the very first one. I went out for a bike ride outside of the city where I was living. And I realized that, wait a minute, I'm. when was the last time that I, that I really took time to go out, smell the roses, be touched by the wind, listen to the birds, live life? I was not even alive anymore. I was just on the screen night and days, paying the bills, trying to satisfy my my needs with something that was so limited. So that's why I said that's enough. So I had to leave everything behind and I, I left I left for Switzerland. And what was supposed to be just a few months to relax, recover from this addiction, became a, a, a healing journey on his own who took me in 12 countries, 400 plus communities, uh, all communities that gave me all of the juice that I was so much in need to improve the quality of my life but also connect the dots and create what became DigiPause, which is this wellness by design. And it's funny because I say that, and in 2008, when I began this uh, journey, I was convinced that I was the only one to struggle with this addiction. And I went cold turkey on a real detox mode for a good two or three years. No phone, I had a GPS, a camera, a flip phone, but that's it for me. And most places where I went to, to help, my contribution was to help on a farm in exchange of a place to stay and food to, to, to feed myself. Uh, I was just moving from one place to another. And uh, I never had to worry about that. This notion of I need to have Wi-Fi, there were none. Most countries that I visited back in 2008 were not yet ready for that. Yeah. So I went to Europe, Africa, part of Asia, Central America, and I had an obsession and a vision. And my vision was to bring that to people who were struggling from, uh, from, from the urban space, the lack of uh, interaction with others, the lack, lack of possibilities to express yourself. You know, I was not thinking about this addiction as it is today because back, back then, smartphone was present, but only in big space for entrepreneurs. It was not something that you would find in the pocket of a farmer in a rural area, yeah. it was not something that was available everywhere. But it's as, as I was getting uh, you know, more ready to build this program and get, give, get, take, take it to the next level, I saw that more people were struggling with that thing. I saw that the screen was the new, uh, um, it, was, it was a limitation on its own. I call it digital enslavement, right? And it's in 2012 when I came back to Canada, because I was like, okay, I got to start a business, that they realized the irony. I was trying to say to people, spend less time online. And now this time it was me going online, trying to get the attention of people, which got me into a depression. And since 20, 2012, and because of the MKP, I've been on a journey to figure a way to create this life tech balance in my own life that could represent or influence others to act in the same way. But it's been... As, as, and I will complete with that. It's been an ongoing challenge. Hear my words when I say that, ongoing challenge. Because this balance, I mean, it's so vicious. You know, there's bills that need to be paid. There's people, my family, I need to connect with my family. There's so many things that I, that I cannot do just in the normal world so that I depend on this virtual environment, right? I mean, this is one of the things that kind of, I find quite interesting is in the years of work that I've been doing with men's work, one of the things that I kind of have realized is we seem to inhabit often men seem to inhabit two worlds or, or more, more than that. There's this kind of internal world that's kind of going on and there's an external world of how it's showing up. And, and often, you know, addictive behaviors and stuff are about kind of slipping into this other world, you know, this uh, yet another one but you know with with online there is this other world which we kind of in a way we is a necessity now in many ways to to have this different world to have these different profiles and these different ways that you can show up and so i can see how it's a very 
addictive thing you know i know it myself is a very addictive thing to kind of be able to slip into oh all this is going on now let's just slip into the air for a little while you know and it, it does um i can see why it's such a challenge and like you know there's some addictions where you know like with alcohol you can say don't drink right and and it's hard not to i'm not saying i'm not trying to belittle that but like the sort of the problem you can go it's it's that i'm just not going to drink today but like with with like say food issues or with sex addiction and i'm guessing with sort of online addiction it's it's kind of different because you need it to have a balanced life you know you need to eat you need to have sex you need to get jump online nowadays how, how, how can most of us professionally function so i guess there's a challenge there and i'm just saying that i sort of recognize that um so that's a little bit about where you've been and your journey um what now what are you trying to accomplish now what's your mission in many ways yeah, my, my mission now, more than ever, is to reconnect people with their true nature. Uh, the source of our true nature, using nature to do it. Uh, in other words, I don't see the point to give a lecture on a situation that can be changed or transformed if it's limited to just a bunch of words. it got to be outside of an intellectual uh, effort. It needs to be an, an emotional one. When you do the weekend, for example, you know, because we're both initiated, uh, we go through so many experiences within 72 hours. It is so rich. And one of the reasons why it's so rich is because we're supported the whole time by nature. Nature will provide you everything you need and more. This is where miracles begin. So my intention more than ever now is to redirect the intention of people, of any online users, because all of us are these days, young or old or whatever, <laughs> you go to school and not go to school, people are online these days. It's just to redirect the flow of your intention into an environment that will nourish you and not the opposite. So when you start to go outside, as an example, most people go outside, but their attention is not focused on what's around them, but what's on their screen. That to me is the first step. And that's achievable. It's not something that says, only if you do a series of treatments of what's so that you will have the ability eventually to look up and see that there's a world around you. That's simple. You know, I could say it's common sense as well, but I would just say that it's feasible and simple. Yeah. And that's why what I did, especially since the beginning of this lockdown, was to create a project that is meant to, yes, yes, address the issue for sure, but also provide effective solutions that anyone can, can do. You know, it's not to say to people, starting now, you have to stop, you must, you're forced to stop using this technology because it's breaking you in pieces and you don't even realize it. Wrong. Who am I to say that? If I was to say to you, okay, starting now, you're going to have after seven o'clock sharp, no more phone. Like, first of all, I cannot say that to you because I'm not doing it. <laughs> Second, it's irrealistic because if at seven sharp, you have a group with UK, as an example, you have the MKP UK. What the heck, you know? So you, you have to create your own balance. And what I found to be best, that is part of my Express the Access project, something we'll talk about, is to use this definition of Digipass, that is this, this uh, business that I started, this wellness by design, Digipass. When you press pause, it means that you can go back to it. So when I go out, as an example, as I'm about to do just after, go out for a walk, I leave my phone here. I don't need my phone. You see, that's just an example. A yeah. very simple example that can make a huge difference. So I go out for half an hour, take time to chill out, take a deep breath, and really connect with connect my senses with my environment. No, I come, then I come back 30 minutes later, I feel fully uh, charged up. I really recognized that with, with my son, actually. Like, I noticed that when I took my, for a long, for a lot of the time, when I was taking my son out, and we were going to do something like going to play football or whatever i'd take my phone with me you know and of course like you know a phone call goes you take it you kind of something goes i would look at it you know until actually a man said to me he said the message you're giving your son every time you look at that screen is that or where every time you just go i'm just going to take this is you're saying whatever is happening on here on this machine is more important than you 
Yeah. It's more important than you. I'm going to pause you to, to mm. do this. And he said, and of course, then what's going to happen is he's going to grow up thinking that thing. I can't wait till I have one of them things. I want one of those things because whatever is in it is important. It becomes like this really important object. Um, so I do one of them things that you do now. If I go out with my son, I'm like, my, I'm leave my phone at home. Like, it don't. There's nothing on there that can be that important, you know. And and uh, and it and there is something so liberating about that, you know. Like when when we, I'm exactly the same age as you. I'm 47. So like when I was when I was a teenager, when I went out on Friday and didn't come back till Monday, like no one could. If you weren't with me, you couldn't get me. Like. And there was such a liberation in that, really, of this yeah. thing of like, now there's almost a sense of fear, but no one can get me. What if something goes wrong? Well, things went wrong decades ago, and, and there were emergencies decades ago, and and that people couldn't get hold of. You know, they left a message, used to phone up someone's mum and go, next time you see so-and-so, can you tell them that, that you know, they need to phone so-and-so? Yeah. So I really get that thing about the pause you know, and, and I get that as, as that's a really good solution. So what, what are some of it? Let's move on to the kind of solutions or solutions, I guess is the wrong word, but let's go on to what we can. Alternative. Do. Yeah. What's the alternative? So we can have a better balance. I'll fear, I'll fear alternatives. Again, the idea is not to ditch your phone away. That makes no sense. And I'm sure that you can replace, if you do that, then you will replace one addiction for another, you know, it's serves a purpose. I think it's just to recognize that it, it's there for a reason, but it's to take control of it. You know, if I say, if I say to my phone, if I really have a conversation with my phone, I say, okay, that's enough. Thank you very much. I'm glad that we you were able to help me today. I already spent five hours or so now. I'm putting you aside and I'm gonna go out and take care of Eric, you know, because I'm not my phone. That's the thing. So when you do that, it's self you create this sense of balance in your own life. And we all have different things that we like more than others. So for me, as an example, I love to ride my bicycle. When I go for a bike ride, okay, I don't need to take the phone with me unless I know I'm going to a new place that I would probably need my phone to get to the right location. Fine, but it's a tool. Okay. If I bring my phone with me, chances are that I will look at it and I will try to entertain myself from it. Or I will try to... See, if I, if I miss something, you know, what we call the fear of missing out, the nomophobia. So the closer you are from the addiction, the stronger it will be. It will have an impact on you. And um, the founder father that created the iPhone, don't remember his name there, um, but he said it so well. He said, look, when we, <laughs> when we talk about obese, right? Imagine if we were to say that fridge is the reason why people are obese. No, the fridge is a container that possess all sorts of resources and you choose what you want to put in it. The same apply with the phone. So we cannot blame the phone, but if the phone is loaded with uh, any apps that are meant to create some distraction and give you a, a moment of joy, as we, as we say, because it boosts this dopamine that creates this kind of ecstasy even if it's just temporary you know of course you're going to keep it with you all the time that's why when you say okay i'm going to take some time off here i'm going to press pause and i'm going to switch over to something else but what what's missing here is to know what am i going to do too often people are and i don't say that to sound like i'm judging uh people here but <clears throat> as i'm giving you an example if we talk about physical activities Lawrence, for a moment okay Let's go for a run. Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a bike ride. Of course, there's some apps for that. How often you hear about uh, uh, professional athletes or, or no, just people who go out to just to, to do their activities and they have uh, earbuds, you know, ready to crank some music. And I got nothing against it. But if the idea is just to cool off completely, charge yourself, Make sure your brain takes some time to relax. Your brain also deserves, in fact, our brain deserves more nap than apps. Okay, that's one of my line. We need to just chill out. Again, what was it? Our, our brain deserves more time for naps than apps. Gotcha. Our, our brain needs to rest. Okay, 
That's why so many people nowadays struggle with mental health issues because their brain is unconstantly, um, there's a term that we use here that I don't have uh, in the neuroscience that says that if your brain is overstimulated, right? It's just gonna, uh, you, it's gonna increase the degradation of your focus and attention and might increase your risk to have any issues such as dementia or even the ellipsia crisis and what so. So that's, to me, that's really important. And the reason, if I may touch on it uh, briefly, but the Express project, the ex Express the Excess, the way that I saw it was a way for me first to cool off. Because during the, at the beginning of the pandemic, I think it was all, it was cool, right? Let's take some vacation, hurry. But then the mask came out and then the vaccine, it was a, a freaking mess. And I was like, how am I supposed to deal with that? You know, and if I go on the phone, I know in advance that it's going to cause me a major breakdown because every time that I was on my phone, I would always receive a message from COVID this, COVID that. <gasps> and I was like, man, this is bad. And we use a term called doom scrolling. Doom scrolling is when you wake up and the first thing you do is to scroll on your phone to look for all the bad news. That's doom scrolling. It serves a purpose. Make you feel like... Uh, uh, I don't know how to say that, to make you feel like you, uh, you are in contact, you're connected, but in fact, you're disconnected. It's a very strange feeling, to be honest with you. So what I said was, okay, well, how can I take control of this situation by bringing activities that are, that are meant to support me instead of the opposite? And I started with blocks of time dedicated to this own offline experience which led me to complete uh, my first book, which led me to improve my health condition because I was running and I was on a bicycle every day. So I was able to really create that for me. And at the end, I realized that, wait a minute, we as men are used to sit in a circle and we're used to vent out our feelings. Yeah. Now we don't do that anymore. And where we are on the screen, we're limited. I took part of different meetings and I don't remember the last time that I heard a man screaming like you, we usually do in a real group, you know? In a real group, it's not the same. It's like, I fucking hate you, son of a bitch. And we know that we have to go through this process. We just let it out once and for good. And we use anything that exists to help us just release the tension. Nowadays, we can't because we're limited, aren't we? If you live in the same space than, than someone else, your beloved one, your kids, you don't want your kids to hear your, their dad saying, I fucking hate the world. He's gonna, the, the kids will be like, oh my gosh, that's a trauma. That's an instant trauma. They'll be, what the fuck is wrong? Okay? So we try to play it cool. We try to put our emotions on the back burner. And the price to pay is like eventually the same emotions will burn us. That's why we call it a burnout. So for me, the express, the excess was to say, okay, so for a specific time, a specific time a day, you're going to do some activities that are completely off from the radar, offline. And now I created this program that is accessible for, for everyone. 20 days, to, uh, excuse me, 20 minutes, 21 days, pick your activity out, outside or inside, I don't care, on your own or with someone. Do it offline. That's the only condition. Okay? Start a puzzle. Um, I don't know. Decide what you like to do. Do you want to do some push-up? Push-up? Go for it. You pick whatever you want, but do it to serve a purpose that is higher than the self gratification Do it because you want to feel better in your skin. Do it because this way you can put aside this technology or at least realize that it's possible. And that's why I made this project a mission possible to bring mental and digital wellness to anyone from any conditions at any given time. Great. So what I want to do is just pause it there for a second, uh, just to remind uh, just to remind people watching that if you've got any questions you want to ask, please yes. put it in the comments. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to you, Eric, really just to sort of say, tell us a little bit more about this challenge. Tell us where men can find out about it and how they can kind of uh, get involved or get in contact with you. Let's do that. 
Okay, so and I just want to mention that this project was uh, already introduced to Mankind Project. It was the digital wellness warrior. It was before COVID. And the idea was to really help men to really see and understand the consequences of this new addiction in their life, simply. And I was supposed to do it in person, in physical space. But now, as you know, things have changed. The good part is this. With the Express the Excess, you can do it again. Of course, at first, you need to have the assistance of someone like me. That makes sense. But then you can be on your own. And it's up to you to decide what kind of challenge works best for you and your environment. As an example, Lawrence, you have a son, okay? You can choose tomorrow and say, okay, what do I like to do? What, what kind of activities do you like to do here? Let's give an example. So uh, he likes, he's, he's a very simple uh, person in his pleasures. If it's, foot, if it's got a ball involved, he loves it. If it has wheels involved, he loves it. Okay. How about bicycle? Would that be a possibility? Bikes, skateboarding, anything like that. Okay. How about starting tomorrow? You say, let's do it. You know, I, I say 20 minutes, but then again, we have three different levels, 20, 60, 120 or more. But if you say, all right, kid, let's go out and we're just going to ch chill out on our bike. We're going to explore different places, you know, make it uh, possible for both of you. And you just go for it. And the only condition is you leave the phone at home. And yeah. let's see what's going to happen. For you, it's going to be already a challenge, but a nice way to connect with your son. And then when you come back, ask, how was the experience? What, why was it so cool? And talk openly about your challenge. Talk openly about the need to, you know, the more vulnerable you are, the more beautiful you'll become for your son. You'll be a hero. And your son will be like, wow, my dad is such a source of inspiration for me, right? Small changes, not talking about big things, small things. You do it for 21 days. And then you ask your son, okay, let's keep track of how it is, you know, for both of us, what happened during this time, 21 days straight. And then let your son decide what you want to do next, right? And that's how we can build it. So itself, it becomes a very sustainable type of initiative that can last for, for as long as you want to. I mean, that's one of the things I really like about it is, is, you know, obviously within within this group, what this group is about is is it's really about how as men we can come together and kind of support each other and and um in collaborative ways. And what I really like about this this initiative is that like it is simple. You haven't you've got not got to go and buy anything, you've not got to go and it's as simple as I'm going to make a commitment for this amount of time, for this amount of time that I'm going to do something differently. So it's very, it's very kind of um, practical. Um, what some of the benefits you've seen from, I mean, obviously you're doing this. Yeah. Um, so what's some of the be benefits that you've seen and people that have, have jumped in and started doing this challenge? What's some of the benefits to them? And then finally, where can they find out about the yeah. challenge? more information so there's a website that i made a temporary website that is express the excess dot com. I invite any man to go there and sign up and also as as we're talking about it um uh, i will really really uh consider the support of any man who are gifted because i'm not that may have some ideas for a new logo new ideas to structure the website ways to pass it on to those who can use it because I believe that itself, it could kickstart not just a conversation, but a real call for action. Because right now in the world of mental health, there's nothing like that. What I found is a series of videos that, keep that, that kind of allow you to understand what you could do, but you're always dependent on them. I want, don't want you to be dependent on me. I want you to just move on, take your 21 days challenge, take it home, decide what they really speak to you. And if you have any blockages, obstacles, or challenges along the way, you reach out to me. If you need a buddy to support you, a buddy to help you see your shadows or get some tips or advice that could help you make it more, make it smoother, I'm, up, I'm, I'm, I'm available here. And, and I don't sound like a doctor or a therapist. I just, I'm a peer supporter, a real one who's been through this thing, okay? So um, yeah, so men can sign up on this, uh, on this website. And what they can expect in return, that's what I found at least from the people around me who took part of this challenge and also many events. 
because uh, you know, briefly, I, I initiated many events over the years. The first National Day of Unplugging Canada, uh, as it is with the first digital wellness day in India. And every time people feel like, wow, if I only knew, this is, this is always the same thing that comes up. If I only knew that it was possible to do something like that, you know, that how great it is when I put aside my phone and can just chill out with perfect strangers and make new friends, how great it is because I feel more relaxed, more cool, less concerned and stress about the world, feel more grounded, more happy. And, 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 and the feeling lasts longer and longer as you get better to, to do it, to, to frame your own programs, your own time off. That, that's why I call it digi-pause, because pause is not to say digi-stop. You know, a radical stop, digi-stop, will be like, there's something wrong, you got to stop now, or something is going to get broken along the way. No. The payoff is zero, and you choose how long you want to take it. So for the Iron Man or Tough Mudder, you know, we talk about ultra marathon, you know, ultra runners. No, the real challenge to me, Lawrence, is not the distance. No, no, it's how you're going to get there. So instead of doing that with always your the music on or whatever you have there, if you dare to do it without it, that's the real challenge. And you're going to have to face yourself along the way, which is, which is itself very, very, very special. Very, it is beautiful. One of, the, one of the comments we've had is um, about putting the putting the, uh, the website address in the comments. So we'll, Eric will do that as soon as we're off here. Uh, come back to where this is posted and you'll be able to find the, the web address there. I mean, one of the things I really like about this and one of the reasons I brought you on here is like the values, the values of this group, I hope, is around connection, uh, challenge, uh, contribution, celebration. And and. What I personally like about how you're doing this is in 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 the sort of arenas of of personal development, for want of a better word, I, I don't like the term personal development. I think it's, it's like you're trying to get somewhere. I see it more as just personal kind of exploration, really, or, or repurposing more. But um, is within this arena, there, there seems to be a sort of drive for perfection which for me is counterintuitive. You know, like every video I see of someone who's trying to be a coach or has the next answer or whatever, they're presenting to <laughs> and they've, they've, hired a, they've hired a Ferrari and they're in some Airbnb house and, they're, and it's perfection. Whereas everything that I believe really is needed for people, I believe for people to, to be happier is to embrace imperfection and, and embrace process. And, and one of the things that I really like about how you're doing this is you're coming and not only are you saying, listen, I've got something that's really valuable that I want to give, which is the contribution part. You're also saying, and if you need some help, get in contact with me. I'm happy to help you. So there's the connection part in there. But you're also giving people a, an opportunity to contribute because you're not pr turning up as I have this perfectly slick project here. You're bringing it like a mission into the world and saying, and I'm going to need other people's help with this mission. I need some men to help me. If you know about websites, if you know about marketing, if you know about how I can fundraise, if you know about all this stuff, get in contact with me and help me do it. And, and for me, I love that because that's exactly what I want this, this group to be, a, a non-competitive, collaborative environment where as long as what you're trying to do is give something great to the world, which will help the life of men and, and in and you know, and by a product of that, men, their communities, the planet, the world, you know, like then let's collaborate with each other. Let's not be competitive. Let's not try and protect yeah. what we have. Let's try and say, here it is. I want to give you it. Can you help me give it? Um, so what's the other than the website, is there any other ways that people can get in contact with you, or is that the best way? Uh on the website, you will have uh, my information. Uh, I'm working right now on my, my website, DigiPaz, because as you can imagine, with the last changes that we've been going through and the one to come, then I need to keep up, the, keep up the, the, the pace with something that is meant to attract the attention of folks that can understand the value of what I have to offer. And as you say, a distinction between the bunch of fellows, no judgment here, but yeah, a bunch of fellows that have this awesome presence online presence that sell themselves as coaches 
with their Ferrari, their house, or whatever. <clears throat> but um, they lack in terms of substance, unfortunately. So for me, it's like, this is what I this is where I want to make a difference. I want to bring some substance. Substance that means that you can use that and create a new world, a world in which you will feel uh, happier, more satisfied, uh, more balanced. It's not about you're going to be rich. I cannot care less because the richness that I have to offer, it's not based on the money that I have in my bank account. It's based on the person that I became. You know, I have lots of friends that are younger than me and they, they look in a, in a terrible condition because they're super stressed out and they're trying so hard to reach this level of perfection. And I believe that when you try to do that, that's itself in, in agony on its own. You know, I, I, I encourage this, this is probably a way to promote it there. I encourage people to make some mistakes. On my YouTube channel that is far from being completed, there's something that says, I am on a mission to bring back the natural, the essential, the unedited, you know, so that we can uh, connect with people in, an, in a more authentic way. So it says, raw but not rude, funny but not stupid, serious but not complex. Like, who am I to give a lecture Especially yeah. if I read what's on the script. Hello? Yeah. Uh, who cares? Numbers. There's numbers for everything. I, I hear the, what we call them, the uh, conspiracy theorists, you know, the, the one that have this kind of uh, channel that attract millions of folks. And I was jealous. I was like, oh, I wish I could have so much people to listen to me every day. And I'm like, no. I, I, no. I mean, great for them that they got so many people that are listening to them all the time, but they lack in terms of substance. They're very good, by the way, very concise, very professional. Wow, best screenshot. You know, you saw them. Yeah. But at which point do you do you put themselves in the shoes of their listeners or viewers? They don't. I'm completely with you on that. I'm completely. They're hungry for more attention. The last Feel me. thing. The last thing we need is more more images of perfect no you know we need bring to imperfection get together and make stuff happen so with that um what's the what was what's the biggest thing that people could do i've, I've heard about how you want to help and and what you can give out what's what could what's the biggest thing you would need right now to help you well man if i was to be uh really honest with you I'm looking now for a, uh, an angel funder, as I said, because uh, there's many uh, angel funders and, and people that have the money, deep pockets, to uh, support those that have new apps. And now Germany is known to be the hub for every apps related to mental health. And I'm like, great. So now we have thousands, and I don't know if the exact numbers, we have thousands of wellness apps that are supposed to help people. What if the idea is to take some time off from what we can consider to be a problem? Why do we need to create more problems that bring people back to the problem? What's wrong to just bring people to their true nature, in nature? So this will be my first thing. If someone out there know, personally knows someone who may, may already struggle or, 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 or struggling with uh, this online addiction, if not them directly, maybe a member of their family, that have deep, deep pockets with money and resources available, well, you can make a difference in this world. Because I believe that I possess the, the qualities, I believe I possess the, the real life experience, nobody can borrow that kind of thing, that can be used and turn at the advantage of others who can benefit from that, right? That's yeah. why my focus now is to connect the dots between the social educational and tourism sector together. And unfortunately, it's back to the same thing, Lawrence, I might repeat myself here, but as long as I lack in terms of a, a, a good and strong online presence, people don't take me seriously here. People think, it, okay, it's cool. It's a great intention, but I cannot compete. We live in this uh, attention economy, right? I cannot compete against this dude who got a, a good, uh, put up a good show, uh, next to his Ferrari, a big mansion in the back. All of what you're going to get from me is a guy who, who got a bicycle in the back and nothing else. Nature. Nature is my, is my support. Uh, I don't have much to, uh, to say about that. I used to be like that, by the way. I used to be the kind of uh, 
head-on show that was looking to get all the attention in the world. But now I realize that it's pointless. What's that about? That's a, to me, that's the way to get to 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 get sick. In fact, okay. right? I realize that it's a it's a nonsense. Yeah, it's a, so, it's it's counterintuitive, isn't it? It's like it is. I see when I see these, you know, like a lot. Don't I don't want to get into coach bashing, right? But no, it's it okay. Really, it really annoys me. It does annoy me when I see people peddling perfection and saying that they want to make life people's life experience better. Um, well, you know, where. And, and also, especially when, especially when they seem to be like half of the half of the stuff I get in my feed about coaching is about become a coach so that you can get a six figure salary. It doesn't seem to be about helping. No, 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 no. We need a reality check here. We need a reality check for those of you that is that are listening to us that are either coaches already or about to be coaches. And I met you in person, by the way. That's why I'm allowed to talk about it. I spent time, believe it or not, over the years, I spent time with celebrities because I was, I have to meet them. That was the thing. I'm going to read a book about them, bestsellers of this or that, and I have to figure ways to connect with them and live with them and work for them for free. I don't care, but I have to be with them. And I saw it with my own eyes. These guys don't walk the talk. They often have ghostwriters who take care of them and they don't walk the talk. Okay, so we when people say I, I made millions of dollars, let me call bullshit on that one. Okay, there's just a few that make money. If we could at least, at the very least, accept that for a fact, then we wouldn't be struggling so hard to get uh, people's attention and try to generate more content online, right? We would be more clever and more like, okay, okay, what <laughs> there is few Tony Robbins that are making so much money, but the rest of the folks around are struggling really hard. If you were able to open this conversation today, and I suggest you to do that, ask any coach, okay, let's act with transparency. How much money have you made since last year? So as an example, there's a new lineup of coaches out there. Tell me, spit it out, how much money? Raw and honest, an honest statement, not just, well, no, no, be honest. And you got folks that make money for a reason that are so stupid. Sorry, I'm going to call it. You know, you heard about this girl who showed her boobs. Girls, not just one, but now it's many girls on Instagram. They make, they make a buck because Instagram, as it is with YouTube, pay for that. You know, it's all about the algorithm. But is it really what you call a mission in life? Can it be more shallow? You know, like there's so many things uh, that you see online that it's so from my point of view, superficial, you know? And I met them, I met digital nomads that travel around the world and do videos on the spot. And as I said, send everything on Twitter, Instagram and what so. But it eat their lifeline, it chew their lifeline because they spend so much time online, night and days. And they're so concerned about the amount of likes they're gonna generate that their life is, is a mess. They are in the best locations ever, but they don't live life. So if, again, the ones that are listening to us are either coaches or aspire to be uh, coaches in the future, want to do it just for the figures, the six figures, you're in the, wrong, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong direction. Good on you if you can make it, but please bring something that is more authentic and more human in this same process. And I believe that the new world, will conclude on that one, the new world will be made out of men and women that are willing to walk into it with a high level of transparency, honesty, and humility. Yeah. Now that's how we can create an impact. Yeah. And I'm talking to all the, the G, you know, we have players. I met players in the past, professional pickup artists, right? Now they are failing the hard way because all of a sudden the girls are waking up and say, dude, I know where you're coming from. I got hurt many times by, by guys like you. Be honest. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to go with both sides. Un honesty meet un honesty. But if you're transparent and, oh. and, and very, very clear on, on who you are and what you can do, it's a different, it's a completely different situation. I'm actually, I'm actually having a conversation on um, Clubhouse on Saturday with a guy called David Chambers, who um, is, a, is a member of this group who uh, has a podcast called Authentic Dating. 
And it's, it's oh, I'd love to be on that one. <laughs> it's literally around that. It's literally around, you know what? Like, just be truthful. It's not a game. Yeah. You don't have to play a game. No. Who you are. That's the secret. Just be yourself. Um, all right. So let's let's finish up. I, let's finish up. And um, I always finish up with the same questions. Same two questions, right? And Go I didn't tell you these before because I like to catch people unawares. What book have you read which has influenced you the most? Ooh, two books comes to my mind at the same time. I have, obviously, The Peaceful Warrior. And I had um, a chance to meet Dan Millman and spend a weekend with him, the author. Fantastic. And Conversation with God. Yeah, it's a great one. Uh, to me, Conversation with God took me out of my period of, uh, I don't know, uh, homelessness, confusion, and what so. So both books are represent some really important moment in my life and I still use what I've learned from it from them sorry in my daily life okay great and the last question is and I know you probably wouldn't have listened to it if it would have happened but if you could go back in time and meet yourself when you were a teenager what single piece of advice would you give yourself oh wow don't forget to breathe Nice. Don't forget to breathe. A nice. Uh, yeah, because uh, I spent 20 years of my life living with uh, a high level of social anxiety, stress disorder, agoraphobia, panic attack, only because I forgot the basic, which is to breathe. Great. Okay. Well, let's, that's as good a place as any to leave it. So thank you so much for coming on we're going to put the address uh in the comments so people can get in contact with you i wish you all the best with thank you with the project you know this group is is around us getting together sharing resources asking for what we need so anything that any way that you want to use the group please feel that you can um uh and yeah, thank you for thank you for showing up. Thank you for bringing your gifts to the world and trying to do what you can do. Um, salute you up. And with thank that, you, Lawrence. Thanks for bringing your own gift to this world. And thanks to all the men who were present in this conversation and the one to come. And uh, let's just say that uh, all of what I dis discussed today just mean that it's possible that digital wellness and mental wellness, even though we're in this time of crisis, can be mission possible. And that's what Express the Excess, the project is all about. Okay. And we shall finish there. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> um, See ya. Everyone who's still online, um, we will be doing, I don't know what next week's one is going to be, but we are going to do one. And uh, I will see you then. Okay. Take care. See you soon. Bye. All right. And now I've got to work out how this stops because I can't find the right screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to close the meeting. <laughs>